Well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Mr. Bartley from Madeira Center. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about undercut in your welds. Okay. Um, undercut's a very big deal on a weld. It's a common flaw that happens. Um, but you can never be a professional welder if you can't get a handle on undercut and make welds that don't have undercut. So at the end of this video, what I'm hoping to do with this video is to lay the problem out for you well enough and to give you some drawings and everything about what I'm talking about uh, and tell you how to, how to get a hold on this because this is one of the biggest problems that people have when they're starting out. Uh, I, I remember it very well. The, the thing is, though, there's a very low tolerance for undercut because nothing will weaken a weld worse. Um, so I'm going to show you a few things, uh, maybe a few sketches and everything, and talk to you about it. And we'll see. The, the thing that you need to do is get it clear in your mind what you're trying to accomplish. Okay? You don't need me to tell you, oh, you need to hold your hand like this and you need to move like this and all that. You need to get it clear in your own mind what it is you're trying to do. And if you can ever really wrap your head around it, your hands will figure out what, what needs to be done. Uh, Welling's very reactive. You can't plan ahead. You have to react to whatever happens. Uh, so the only thing that you've got as far as um, knowledge goes is what you want to happen. Um, everything else you're going to have to do on the fly. But let me give you a few tools here and, and really line out what I'm talking about when I'm talking about undercut and how you can combat it. Okay, so if you look at the drawing, um, and we're talking about electric arc welding. Okay, most welding processes nowadays, the way you heat the metal is with an electric arc. And the thing you gotta understand about that is that the electric arc excavates, it digs out some of the metal uh, from the base material. Okay, and that's a good thing. That's your welding penetration. Uh, but the thing is, however much you scoop out with the electric arc, you're gonna to have to put that back in and more with your filler metal, all right? And if you fail to do that, then you're gonna have part of it, uh, and it's usually right next to the weld, that um, there's not as much metal as there was when you started, okay? Which is a, a total worst case scenario, because not only is there less metal there, the metal's been heated up, it's in the heat affected zone. And so it's not even as strong right there on the edge of the weld, as it was before you started, right? So you, you've made something really weak and it's, it's really prone to failure if you do that. And so the thing that you gotta understand is that you're doing that. As soon as you light up on a piece, as soon as you strike that arc, it's gonna blow out a crater. You know, it's gonna make a hole, a divot in the metal, right? Now, the first thing that you need to do is not make that bigger than you want to, all right? If I tell you, I want a quarter inch fillet weld on this, this T fillet right here. Um, you don't need an arc that's half an inch wide, right? If it's half, if it's half an inch, it's twice as big as what you need. And you would have to sit there and hold your electrode there long enough to actually fill that up to not have undercut, and then your weld would be oversized. Okay, so um, you want to keep the crater down in size. Okay, this is part of the overall goal of controlling your heat input into the piece of metal. Overall, you can only put so much heat in any piece of metal or you ruin it, all right? So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna keep from making this great big arc crater bigger than we want, that we can't fill? Uh, the first thing is look at your arc length, all right? Especially if we're stick welding. If we're stick welding, uh, the arc length, of course, is how far off the metal your electrode is, right? Now, the right way to do this, 
and the way I teach everybody to do it is crank the machine up nice and hot and keep the arc really short, okay? Um, a lot of people think they'll do better with undercut if they turn your machine down. And you can go too hot and it'll cause undercut. But a lot of undercut is uh, inexperienced people turning their machine too cold, okay? And the big problem with that is the metal doesn't flow as good. And um, you're probably gonna run out of patience before you get it where you want it to be and move on and you haven't filled it. Okay, so we wanna turn the machine up nice and hot so that the metal flows well, okay? This welding business, we're melting metal. Uh, you need to be hot to do that, right? So we're gonna turn it up nice and hot so that it flows well. And we're gonna keep the arc nice and tight, okay? The things you gotta understand about this is the farther out you back, you back up, the, the arc comes out in a cone shape. Okay, it gets bigger the farther out you get. So even if you're just doing fine and you're welding along and you go, ow! Well, you're gonna have undercut and aspot for sure. <laughs> All right, so you don't wanna do that. But the whole time you have to have it clear in your head before you start, I'm gonna keep this choked up nice and tight, All right? The other thing is you just have to wait for it to fill in. All right. Um, Depending on, you know, the, the process we're using, some processes are a lot slower than others. If you've been doing MIG welding and you switch over to stick welding and we're doing, say, a 7018LH, uh, you're not going to be able to move as fast as you were when you were doing MIG welding. It, it just doesn't happen that fast. So if I, I see a lot of times people are just rushing, okay? The fact is... We're going to set you up on a tee like this. You're going to dig out the top of it. You want to, you usually want to start on the piece that is vertical. And you're going to start up near the top. And you got to hold it there. It's going to excavate. It's going to scoop out that metal. You got to hold it there till that fills in. And it's a little bit counterintuitive. Because I remember when I started out, and my welding teacher told me, he says, it's, it's not like you think it is. You think, yeah, I'm only going to get a big drip. Right. And yeah, if you hold it there long enough, you'll get a big drip. You need to hold it there quite a while, a second or two, to let the metal go in there and let that fill up before you even start to bring that puddle down and tie in the bottom piece. OK, and then you've got to give that time to happen. Now, I'm not saying you got to spend a lot of time in the middle because you really don't. You need to spend your time on the toes of the weld, the toes of the weld or the corners of the weld. All right. Uh, that's where you're going to have your undercut. It's going to most likely be on the on the top corner of the well. But you can, if you try hard enough, get it on the bottom corner too. Right? So the big thing is, once you make the crater, once you make the crater, you have to fill it in. You can't move on until you do. doesn't matter what process you're using, uh, what alloy it is, none of that. The mechanics of it are still always the same. Okay, so you got to be aware of that, and you have to be looking for it. Like I was saying before, you can't plan it out ahead of time. You have to be looking. You have to be observing very carefully. Uh, if you've got a process that has a slag covering, you have to be able to tell the difference when you're under the hood and you're looking. You have to be able to tell the difference between the slag puddle and the metal puddle, right? You have to be be able to distinguish between your puddle and between the, the crater that you've excavated, all right? And you have to watch your puddle and you have to watch it fill that in before you move on. And it, I don't know, it really is that simple. It sounds simple. It's a lot harder to do, uh, but I know you guys can do it. Uh, I'm gonna show you a few more drawings here and uh, hopefully they'll be helpful to you, okay?